Well, I think some of the interesting things about epilepsy really have just to do with, um, you know, better localization and predicting. Um, I didn't see a lot of uh, abstracts that specifically looked at artificial intelligence, but I really wonder about using the data that we're getting. Um, we looked at some of those SEEG abstracts and everything, like the cluster analysis one. Um, you know, is there a better way to find uh, where the actual target is? For, for myself as a surgeon, that's of course critically important uh, because we want to find the focus. Presumably there is one. But also, I think that we're moving definitely to an area with you know feedback, RNS, um, you know, and um, and I can imagine a time when, in addition to therapeutic uh, drugs, there are going to be more and more feedback responsive systems. Uh, so I think that's really where the excitement is. And then, of course, as that as those systems get smarter, that's where I think we would like to see things. I was hoping, and we'll hope to see some information about networked kind of, uh, you know, progressively learning systems, uh, because for the epilepsy patients, I think that's what we're gonna need. People have for a long time looked uh, at these, at epileptic waves themselves uh, as, as chaotic elements, as a more mathematical problem and tried to model that in a super, supercomputer way. But I think that what we're really thinking about now is getting back the data from implanted devices potentially and and trying to figure out if we can predict what does or doesn't stop things or what you know, predicts a seizure so that we can start to get more feedback. And by pooling that data, I mean, the nice thing about AI is you don't actually have to know how it's gonna make its decision. You just have to give it a lot of data and tell it what you wanna know. And in, in the end, I think that that's something that we're very likely to get benefit for uh, epileptic patients to be able to sense. I mean, a lot of them have a lot of uh, episodes for one thing. It's a lot easier. There's plenty of signal there. I saw someone today who, you know, is probably having three seizures a day. So there's plenty of data coming back uh, that that they could use to then figure out, you know, what's causing it and what would stop it. We're never sure whether something wasn't effective because we didn't do the right treatment or whether because we didn't have the right target or we didn't have enough of the target, meaning we had some target, but we didn't have uh, the whole target that was necessary to, you know, to make it work, uh, to make the thing go away. And then secondly, the same thing is predicting outcomes. We don't really know beforehand uh, whether we're going to cause a deficit or not. I mean, you can cause a deficit for a purely technical reason, meaning you did something you didn't intend to do, but sometimes you can do exactly what you intended to do, and still we just aren't good enough at predicting you know, what may be tied into function. Um, you know, this is a real interesting thing. One of the um, abstracts that, that we looked at was the one about uh, stereotactic laser uh, amygdala hippocampectomy. And so this laser interstitial, you know, thermal therapy is very interesting now. Certainly our patients come seeking it as opposed to open surgery, even though our, you know, open microsurgery can be excellent. But I understand why, I mean, you're making a tiny hole and you're going in and making this kind of lesion. And if you look at the, you know, that uh, you know, double AN abstract, it wasn't as effective as big surgery is. But nonetheless, many patients will choose it because it's so much less invasive. And if we could really help them to determine who is going to um, do well with it, that would make a difference. I mean, I think even for drugs sometimes, you get a drug which isn't as effective, but it has so many less side effects <clears throat> that the cost benefit weighs more on the side of the new drug uh, because the side effect is really what was the problem. And, and I think for many people, the small chance of a large surgical complication um, is enough to put them off of having surgery. I mean, in my view, you know, epilepsy surgery is not used enough. It's very effective in the properly selected group of people not for every patient, but every patient who's a good candidate should be getting it. That being said, not every patient who should be getting it is willing to get their head around the process of having you know, surgery or having something as final as a piece of their brain removed. And I think the idea that we could put in a laser probe and just treat a small area you know, and do a lot less harm, um, even if it's not quite as effective, is, is attractive to